Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. One of the best add-ons for the Cosman workbench is a tool tray. Now, mine's always full of junk, but I'd rather have it there than laying on the floor somewhere. So if you want to show off your dovetail skills, stay with us. I'm going to walk you through the process of building a workbench tool tray. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. So if you're not familiar with it, this is the Cosman workbench. Really simple, designed to be your first workbench made out of a piece of a sheet of one inch MDF and some 5 8 Baltic birch plywood, minimal tools, can do it in a weekend. If you want to know more about that, we'll leave a link down below and it'll take you to that video. This is the tool tray. This one was actually built by a student of mine, Bry Christensen. And the nice thing about it is it can be easily attached because the sides are not attached to the bench. It's the half inch bottom that literally screws up from the bottom side so you can put it on either side. Just really simple and easy to do. Dovetailed corners. We're going to make this one out of some uh, three-quarter pine and some half-inch Baltic birch plywood. I'm going to change the design a little bit. If you'll note, this one hangs down below. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently, so it'll be a little bit, uh, it won't be any shallower, but it'll show a little bit better right here. Great way to show off your dovetails. Great addition to your bench because instead of your tools ending up on the floor you've got your tool tray to catch them it does fill up with junk i spend an hour a week finding treasures in there that i didn't know i had but a lot of fun easy build three or four hours let's go we need a cutting list and you'll notice that we have radiuses you have to do that when you're working with mdf if you leave sharp corners that are too easily damaged and since we can't bring a square piece into a radius without having it look like a big gap, we've got to have this tool tray meet somewhere inside of that radius. And if we look at that, a half an inch would put us back in here, which is a nice safe zone. So we'll take the overall length of the bench, which is 60 inches. We'll take an inch off of that. So we're going to make our tool tray 59. Now the tool tray is going to look like this, a big modified, well, if you look at it that way, an upside down U. So we're going to go 58 inches out here. So we're going to need one piece. That's 58. Now the depth. We want this to be flush. The other one we did wasn't. So it's going to be three inches wide. So by three. And we're using three quarter pine. So by three quarter. Now we're going to need two of the end pieces. And what we have to determine is how deep this way do we want the tool tray. And it has to look properly proportioned to the bench top. If you look at mine over here, I've got a six inch gap, but I think six inches out here would be maybe too much. And I'm only telling you this just based on my gut. I'm gonna make that five inches. So if we've got five inches on the inside, in other words, our space from the edge of the bench to the inside edge of that long piece on the outside is gonna be five inches. A dovetail goes all the way through, so that means we have to make these end pieces five plus the thickness of this piece, so it's going to be five and three quarter. So we need two of those, five and three quarter. They're going to be the same width by three, and they're going to be the same thickness by three quarter inch. Now, I think we'll go ahead and do that, process it. Because of the way we're going to attach the piece of plywood, we can actually go ahead and finish the, uh, the wooden piece and then determine our measurements for the pine, uh, pardon me, for the plywood. Now it is gonna to have to go up underneath here. It's gonna butt against that stretcher. So we'll take advantage of that and take it in as far as we can. And we screw it up underneath to make it nice and solid. But I'm gonna go ahead and process these three pieces. Okay, so this is as it came right from the lumber yard. So I'm going to clean up I'm going to clean up the mill marks just on the inside because the outside will be done after we after we uh, assemble the joint. A little bit of wax on the sole of the plane. Get that blade projecting so that it's parallel.
you hear that skip. So we need to do it until we maintain the shaving the full length. Gonna check this. That's yeah, a low spot right there. I'm gonna go in and see if I can just clean that part up. And right there. <coughs> now I want to keep the surface flat, so I'll check it with the edge of my plane particularly at the ends where they were going to cut the joint. Now I'm going to retract the blade. I got some plane tracks right there in the middle. I'll just retract the blade so it's a much lighter cut. Okay. So that one's done. Now give me a second. We'll do the same thing on these end pieces and then we'll be ready to lay out the dovetail. I like to have the dovetails actually on the outside. So dovetails here on this piece, pins on this piece. But the problem is, how am I gonna cut dovetails on a piece that tall? So I'm gonna show you a way of doing it that's gonna make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna put it in the vise for right now just to do the layout, but we'll actually do the cutting laying it across their bench like this. Now, normally we would be sitting this in our vise like this and cutting it, but up here vibrates too much, too awkward to get at. So we're gonna have to hold it in a different way. I'm gonna suggest this might be a method you wanna try. We're gonna hold it like that so it's well supported. We're gonna put some cl a clamp on there and we're gonna cut from a different position. Okay, we've got that clamp to the bench. Now, I'm going to suggest this as a way of doing it simply because this is an unnatural way for me to cut dovetails. Um, and the most critical thing we have here is the cut across the end of the tailboard must be perpendicular. I'm gonna actually use my dovetail marker and I'm going to get the cut started laying against this. Now once it's started, I'll let move that out of the way. And with a light touch, finish that cut. Careful not to go below my line. Come over here. Holding that up against the guide. Now this one's going to be a little bit awkward because you got to go the other way. I'll hold that in position. I'm going to put it right on the mark so that I don't cut into it. Have the dovetail marker cover the line so that you're cutting in the waste. Keep the saw tight to it. Whoops. That's not very good. Try that again. Hopefully we can get away with that. Now we didn't cut all the way to the line, it was too hard to see, so I'm going to put this back in the vise. And even though it's on an angle, the saw kerf will support this blade, so I'll just put that in there. And then just lightly saw until I get right down to the baseline. That one's good.
Okay, just before we assemble this, to make it a little bit easier, I want to plane the edges of the long piece. I'm going to make them a little bit narrower than these two so that after it's assembled, all I have to do is plane those instead of having to plane into a piece running the opposite direction, which just makes it a little more difficult than it needs to be. I'm going to transfer that A over onto here so I don't lose that. Up against the bench dog. A little more blade. Now I'll do that until I get rid of all the saw marks. I've got a few left right there in the middle. That looks good. Now we'll do the bottom side as well. Okay, now we'll go ahead and assemble these. Just let me grab all the glue, everything we need, and we'll show you how we put together one corner and then we'll do the other one off camera. Now with this one, it's gonna be a little bit easier to put the pins into the tails as opposed to the other way around, just because of the length of this. So we're going to butter all of the mating long grain surfaces. That means the side of the tails and the side of the pins. And I will put a little bit on those outside shoulders, even though they're in grain. And I, I prefer to use this little spatula because you can, I think you can more accurately place your glue and it reduces the mess of the brush. Now, get it started by hand first. I'm gonna put a block on here just to protect it. And you can also set your square right on there. Move that out a little bit. Flip that over. We've got a little bit more. We're not quite closed. So what I'm going to do is hang this over the edge. Check it again. Once it's square, make sure it's seated down here at the bottom. And I'm going to put a clamp, a small clamp, right across these two half pins. And that'll just hold that in position until it dries. Now, yeah, that looks good. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the other one. And then we'll be ready to work on the bottom. Okay, next move is to flush up all of these edges. So you can either use the uh, larger plane or a block plane. Now you might want to anchor it against something or if you can hold it by just with your hand. Now I'm checking it with my index finger on my left hand so that I know when I'm close. that over. Okay, now flushing these up on a long piece like this is going to be a bit awkward, so I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a clamp and a block. Green direction is going right. in a little bit. Now I'll just move this forward. Now these end pieces are going to be a little bit difficult. I suppose we could plane straight down like that which is going to be a little less than ideal but 
because of the length of it, there really isn't any other way to hold it. That wasn't so bad. Now we'll set up the router to cut the rabbit and just looking to decide which end I'm gonna, which side I'm going to put or which edge I'm going to put on the bottom. And I've got a bit of a big old pitch pocket right there so I think I'll put that one on the bottom side. Okay let me grab the router and the bit and I'll show you how we do that. The easiest way to cut this is going to be on a router table. But I want to do it in two stages. It's a lot of material to hog off. So I've, I, always, I wrote on here with an arrow just so that I can always know which way it's rotating. And you want to go against rotation. Now, doing this part is okay because there's lots of stability. However, when we get out here to where we're doing the middle of this, you don't have a whole lot of surface area and you're removing half of it. So you're going to have to support it back here as you feed it through carefully and then once that gets on the table that'll take over and help support it. Just have to be careful. I'm switching because there's a bow in my table. So if I run the long, I run it this way, it's not going to lay flat on this part. Now we got to get that to the right depth, so I'm going to grab a piece of scrap. Okay, now I just need to raise that a bit up to the height of that plywood. Actually, check it against the carbide. And that needs to come up just a little bit more. Should be good right there. Okay, let's measure this. So the length is going to be 57 and 5 sixteenths. And then for the width, we need 5 and 7 sixteenths plus whatever we're going to go in here. Now I want to go right to that stretcher so that we get the maximum amount of surface area. So that's almost two and a half. So we'll say to be safe. Two and seven sixteenths. We'll check it down here. Ooh, it's not quite the same. So two and three eighths is safer. 
So we add 2 and 3 eighths to that. Well, that's 6 sixteenths, and 7 is 13 sixteenths. So 7 and 13 sixteenths is going to be our width. So I'm going to go rip a strip. 7 and 13 sixteenths by 57 and 5 sixteenths, and then we'll work at cutting to fit it. Okay, so this piece fits lengthwise just the way we want. So we have two options in the corner. We can either cut the plywood round to fit that, by the way, it's the radius is inch and a quarter, or we can go and chisel that out. Well, I would prefer to preserve as much material here as possible, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, cut around on this. So what I'll do is just draw a line 45 degrees in from the point. Set my dividers at half an, of an uh, inch and a quarter, which is going to be 5 eighths. And then come in here to the point where we center point is on that line. Yeah, that was like too far out. You can do it on the other side as well. Now if I need to, I can use a rasp, which is essentially a file for wood, to go in and tidy that up a bit. They come in various grits, only it's called a grain. Fine would be 14 or 15, and really coarse would be 2 or 3. This is a 13. Now, before we do the other one, we'll check this and see how it fits. Yeah, not as tight as it could have been, but it'll be on the underside. Okay, now I'll get this one done, and we'll be ready to install that. Actually, we'll be ready to fit it to the bench. Okay. Now. I'm going to clamp this in place. Now I put some marks on there where I think it should go. And I just want to eyeball it and see if that's correct. That'll keep it in from each end. Of a... Okay, that's good. Now, got to determine the depth. So, if this is designed to go right to there, which is 2 and 7 sixteenths, and these stick out from there about an inch and an eighth. So I'll come up here an inch and an eighth. Okay, check that one more time. 
That's actually just an inch. So that'll give us a little bit of wiggle room. So now cut these off with the jigsaw. And then we can go ahead. Got to do a little bit of fitting in here. There's a spot where it left a bit of a bump. And I'm going to go in and clean that up with a shoulder plane. First, we need to cut these. tight and I've got a little bit of room to go this way so what I'm going to do is take a little off of here Good. Now, let's take a look at this at the bench. So we got a bump right here. So I'll take my shoulder plane. I want to cut into this vertical wall, so I need to have it flush on that side. So the blade is always a little bit wider than the plane. So all you need to do is push down on something solid, and that'll flush that blade up. Check the projection so that it's even. Still a little bit of a bump there. Check the back wall, that feels good. Okay. Now this being plywood, we don't have to worry about expansion. So we can go ahead and we can glue, and I'm gonna just glue and staple because the glue alone will be enough. Staple that in place. You could screw it if you want. And then once, that, once that's in, we can go ahead and put the screws on the bottom side, fasten that, and we're, we're done. Now, we'll keep the glue to the back so it doesn't end up. And we can do the Do the uh, back edge as well. It's plywood and there's some long grain on there. Okay, I'm using a, how long was that staple? Seven eighths? Seven eighths by quarter inch crown. I thought it went out, but I didn't.
Okay, no staples. We got some glue to deal with over here. All right, put that in place. Now, just before we do that, you could cut a uh, cord around all around that outside, or you could do a chamfer. But since we already have a cord around on there, we may as well put a cord around on here. Now to finish off these corners, make it look a little neater. What we'll do is we'll take this one in first. So we're gonna lay on this radius and we'll just finish it like so. Then on an angle we'll come up and cut like that. And I gotta go a little bit deeper. We gotta bring that all the way back to this line and on an angle. And then we can come in just ease that and then roll on that radius. Do the same thing down here. Okay, put this in place. Now, tap that in. And I figure one two, three, four, five, six screws. So what I'm gonna do is use my big clamp because I don't wanna end up coming up through the, through the dog hole. So I'll put that on right there and it'll hold it nice and tight. Is that the shortest one we got? And I'll go in and go to the either the left or the right of that. And then I don't have to worry. These screws have self-drilling point but that's too long okay put that in place now we'll clamp on that now I'm going to use a mallet to Drive that in tight. Now, I don't want to end up drilling up through my dog holes. So what I'll do is put this large clamp on there. 
which will help hold it nice and tight and I can I can put a screw to the right or to the left. And I'll put one out here. So if we went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And these these Robertson screws have self-drilling tips and they countersink themselves because they've got little cutters underneath the head. Now, sand those top edges, put a coat of finish on there to keep it from getting dirty. And that tool tray is ready to get started filling up with junk. Hi, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said, better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.